Apparently all my children have learned at school this year is how to do all the Fortnite dances. <sighs> Donald Trump wants to get rid of birthright citizenship, and he thinks he can do it, too. Now they're saying I can do it just with an executive order. Now, how ridiculous. We're the only country in the world where a person comes in, has a baby, and the baby is essentially a citizen of the United States for 85 years with all of those benefits. It's ridiculous. Now, the legal argument that this they are offering the president is as dicey as my prediction that the New York Giants were going to make the Super Bowl this year. Not so much, but much more on the legal piece later. First, let's figure out what exactly Donald Trump is talking about. And we start here with the definition of birthright citizenship, which is pretty simple. Birthright citizenship is the concept that if you are born in America, you are an American citizen. See? Simple. It's one of a handful of ways you can become an American citizen, the other most notably being born to parents who are citizens. That's why Ted Cruz is an American citizen, despite the fact that he was born in Canada to a Cuban father. His mother is an American citizen. And yes, you remember, Donald Trump sought to raise questions about Cruz's citizenship during the 2016 Republican primaries because, of course, he did. But he's got a lot of problems. He's got a problem with his Canadian birth. He was born in Canada. I think they said 36% of the people agree that he can't run for president. He was born on Canada in Canada, and he was born on Canadian soil. Now, he can run for prime minister of Canada. Now, the idea of birthright citizenship originated in ye old English common law, but the notion of just solely, it's Latin for right of soil, that's 13 years of Latin speaking, was reinterpreted in the 1850s in one of the most famous and infamous Supreme Court decisions ever, Dred Scott versus Sanford. Scott was a slave who had lived in free states and territories prior to being moved back to the slave state of Missouri, and he sued for his freedom. The Supreme Court ruled that because Scott was black, he was not a citizen of the United States and therefore could not sue. Less than a decade after that ruling, Congress passed the 14th Amendment, which effectively undid the Dred Scott ruling with these words. Listen, because they're important. Quote, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. End quote. Seems pretty straightforward, right? If you're born here or become a naturalized U.S. citizen, you are a U.S. citizen, no matter what. Now, the Supreme Court has also upheld the idea of birthright citizenship. In 1898, that's 30 years after the 14th Amendment went into effect, the court decided the case of Wong Kim Ark. It's a man born to two Chinese parents while in the United States. While the family moved back to China, Ark himself decided just to visit his parents' homeland and to return back to the U.S. Five years after that return, he took a trip to China and then was not allowed back into the United States. In a sidebar, there was considerable anti-Chinese sentiment in the country at the time, as many people blamed Chinese immigrants for taking the jobs of white men. Sidebar end. And despite those prejudiced beliefs in the broader society, the Supreme Court ruled in Ark's favor, affirming the pledge laid out in the 14th Amendment that because he was born on American soil, he was an American citizen. The issue of birthright citizenship and attempts to alter the Constitution to end it has waxed and waned for decades in American politics. Honestly, it mostly waned in the 20th century as the majority of politicians, even those who opposed the idea, saw it as a settled practice due to both the 14th Amendment and the ruling from the Supreme Court. In the early 1990s, Harry Reid, yes, the Democrat who would go on to become his party Senate leader, introduced a bill that would end birthright citizenship. Known as the Immigration Stabilization Act, the bill's stated goal was, quote, to curb criminal activity by aliens, to defend against acts of international terrorism, to protect American workers from unfair labor competition, and to relieve pressure on public services by strengthening border security and stabilizing immigration into the United States. That's Democrat Harry Reid. In 2006, Reid called his attempt to end birthright citizenship, quote, the biggest mistake I ever made, end quote. The issue continued to come up from time to time in the 2000s as politicians tried unsuccessfully to come up with any sort of comprehensive solution that would deal with the estimated 11 million people and growing in the United States illegally. And then Donald Trump decided he wanted to run for president in 2015 and to make immigration and his insistence that the U.S. had the absolute worst immigration laws in the world the centerpiece 
of his presidential campaign. Trump's pledge to build a wall along our southern border absolutely got the lion's share of attention at the time. But if you go back through Trump's speeches as a candidate, his desire to get rid of birthright citizenship is right there, too. What happens is they're in Mexico, they're going to have a baby, they uh, move over here for that. a couple of days, they have the baby. No, but Bill, they're saying it's not going to hold up in court. There is a way to do it, and that is to try to get the Constitution amended. Do you know how to do that? It's a long process, and I think it would take too long. I'd much rather find out whether or not anchor babies are actually citizens. Uh, At the heart of the debate are the words of the 14th Amendment that I read earlier, and the words in particular that say this, quote, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, end quote. Proponents of revoking birthright citizenship argue that Congress could pass legislation defining what those six words mean. The Supreme Court of the United States has never ruled on whether or not the language of the 14th Amendment, subject to the jurisdiction thereof, applies specifically to people who are in the country illegally tweeted Trump on this, quote, so-called birthright citizenship, which costs our country billions of dollars and is very unfair to our citizens, will be ended one way or the other. It is not covered by the 14th Amendment because of the words subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Many legal scholars agree, end quote. Let's be clear here. This gambit by Trump is about politics. Trump knows immigration animates his base, and the harder line he takes on it, up to and including ending birthright citizenship, the better it will be received. And honestly, it might work as a political strategy. But in terms of the chances of Trump actually ending birthright citizenship, well, there is no chance. You cannot end birthright citizenship with an executive order. We didn't like it when Obama tried changing immigration laws via executive action, and obviously as conservatives, um, you know, we believe in, in, in the Constitution. You know, as a conservative, I'm a believer in following the plain text of the Constitution, and I think in this case, the 14th Amendment's pretty clear. Now, Trump offered no backup for his claim that he could, in fact, do that. And when asked by reporters who the they were that had told Trump that abolishing birthright citizenship was within his powers, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said this. Uh, there are a number of legal scholars who certainly think he can. Mm, the long and short of this is it ain't happening. Trump knows that, trust me he does, but he also knows that his base needs red meat and calls to end birthright citizenship are a big, fat, juicy steak to throw in front of them. And that is the point. I do this every week, twice. Make sure you check out new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday.